So this tutorial is going to go through how to make stylized hair. So I'm going to be starting off just with a demo project anime, just because it is stylized and this will get me started. Um, we'll load this up and I'll turn off the floor plane. So I have some reference of what I'm going to be sculpting for the hair. Right over here, I'm just using Spotlight to load this up. Uh, first thing is I'm going to add a sphere. So going to my subtools, an append, a basic sphere. And I'll turn on transparency so I can see the uh, character below and just use my scale gizmo to move this uh, generally into sh position. Once that's kind of there, I will turn on symmetry by hitting X on my keyboard, and then with a big old move tool, I'm just kind of squish this hair a little bit. So it's not entirely spherical. Pull that out, and then I'll turn off my transparency. I'm just looking for a cap. It doesn't need to be particularly accurate. This is just to get something to start as a base. Uh, I'll use switch over to my inflate tool just to add a little bit more volume to these areas. And check around. So I have a basic shape here. I'm going to be using this hair uh, mesh to create um, using a lot of ZBrush curves. And I have a couple of custom brushes that I particularly like to use. They're by two different artists. And I will load them up using my brush menu. Go to load and load up both of these. You have to load up one at a time, actually. So, the two brushes are Macon Hair Curve 3 and DE Hair 2s. These are my two favorites that I've found so far. Uh, just to kind of show you what these look like, starting with the Macon, I'll draw a curve out on the hair. And I'll draw it all the way up. So it has a lot of different shapes to it if I activate the dynamic subdivisions by turning this button on. It really has a nice flow to it. Uh, and there's of course a couple different kinds. If I switch them and then click on my curve to update, it will change them. You'll notice over here at the very tip, it is kind of curling in on itself. And then also, this is my start point, and this is the end. So it's actually doing the opposite like tapering that I'd like it to be doing. So for that, I just need to change a couple of uh, curve settings. So I'm going to go up to my stroke menu, down to curve modifiers. And this curve fall off is currently controlling the size of my curve or the tapering of it. So if I click on that, it's going to give me this nice little grid saying it starts off small and then gets larger. So I want to flip this so I could grab these dots or I can use this FH saying flip horizontally. If I click on my curve now, it's going to swip, swap that. Um, and I want to do one more thing is I'll move this curve up a little bit, this dot, so it's not quite as thin right there. And that fixes that little problem I had with it kind of collapsing in on itself. And it's also very helpful to add one more dot, give it a little bit more variety and have um, a different curve. I'm going to click on that to see what that update says. We'll try a different one. Click on that. So a variety of different pieces here are very helpful um, for the overall stroke. So this is the Macon here. I will now switch over uh, quickly to the DE 
hair tubes. Click on that one. This is a little bit simpler of a, a brush and there's a couple different kinds. So this is simple A, pretty, you know, simple. Then there's multi thick B. And some nice things about this one, so if I turn on my um, wireframe, is it has a start and end, but if I click on my mesh and uh, go down to poly groups and auto group, they are different sections to this hair. So if I group them by a manifold or geometry that is um, cohesive, then I have these different poly groups, which are really nice for being able to move them around. So if I switch over to my move brush, I can now move these individual pieces around, which is very helpful um, to turn on your mask by poly group. I'm going to go to my brush settings again and down to auto masking. The top slider here says mask by poly group. If I set that to 100, now the first poly group that I click on is going to be the one that I move and it's going to ignore everything else. So it creates a very easy workflow for manipulating these hair curves. So I can grab this one and then just click on this one. Whatever the first poly group that you click on is the one it's going to automatically mask to and only move that one. So this allows me to have one curve with multiple different um, poly groups so that I can really easily make a variety and have different hairs kind of flying away and going different directions. So I'll turn off my wireframe and activate my dynamic subdivisions to kind of see how this looks. Click on this little piece. error there where it didn't update but so really nice to show that I can have one stroke and then make it feel like a bunch of different strands and get that variety so with these two curves I will create this sort of short hairstyle uh, that I have in the reference over here now I'm gonna undo this one If I add this to the hair, yes. you'll notice it's clipping through the head. It's not uh, snapping to the surface. Instead, it picks the first point and then goes on screen space from there. And that can be useful in some instances. But right now, I just want to follow the head mesh that I have current here, this little hair cap. So what I need to do is change what it's picking. Instead of picking the first point and then only once picking it and then going from there, I want to constantly pick the depth. So this is actually found in the picker menu under depth. Right here it says once. So this means that it's going to sample or pick the depth once or you can pick it constantly. So if I change this to constant Z and we'll move this I'll undo that one and then draw the stroke on. Now it's snapping to the constant piece here. So that's most of what I want here. But there's also the uh, point of how much depth, how far is it going into my mesh. Um, currently it's kind of sitting just on top of it and we can still control this as well. So if I go to my brush menu and then down to depth, this is the depth of the stroke or how much it's adding. So right now it has nine in bed, so it's just like sitting a little bit above, the center point is higher. If I want to sit that a little bit lower, we'll move this just quite a bit by 26 here, and then click on this, you'll see it's snapping inside of the mesh more of. We'll change that back, changing the depth, maybe add a little bit here, 
click on that and now it's kind of almost floating on the mesh so finding a middle ground you can put that to a zero if you want it to be exactly midpoint you want to sit in it depends on the stroke of what you're working with So with these couple of tips, adding these two brushes, the DE and MAC on curves, changing the stroke curve modifier so it has a little bit of depth and it's going the right direction. We went to the picker and changed it to constant Z instead of just for once. And finally, in the brush settings, there's the depth amount, depending on how much you want to add. We'll set that to maybe two and see what that gets us. All right, so those are our different settings that we can play with to create this different hair mesh. Now I'm going to go through and add the basic level of hair. I'm going to start with this Macon one because it has thicker strands. And then afterwards I'll go to the DE one because it has those multi-strand pieces that I can then play with and make the hair um, more hair like less uniform so one more thing to consider when doing your hair is and why i have the the de mac on one with the multi strands and i can move them around you don't want your hair to look like this it's too even there's evenly spaced apart hair goes on top of each other so something more like this is a more realistic amount and will have more life and variety to it. Not evenly spaced lines. You want to have more depth. So with that, we'll start sculpting. I'll draw out my hair mesh one more time and also undo so I have just the hair. All right. And at this point, I don't need symmetry because um, I just needed it to get the basic shape, but now I want to have asymmetrical hair. So I'm turning off symmetry by hitting X. Uh, one more thing I like to do is just use a little bit of dam standard um, to define where the part of the hair is. So for her, it's mostly in the back there. And I'll define a little bit of where the hair planes are going to be going with some clay tubes. And the clay buildup is probably a little bit better. Just to give me some directionality while I'm adding these different strokes to it. So I might speed up this part of the video as I just add strokes. So one other thing I want to point out is sometimes it can be difficult to control the hair splines. It's just not quite working the way you like it to, um, and it's just not twisting the right way. Um, and in those cases, there is a uh, another way to control the different hairs, especially useful for a little bit longer hair. This one is uh, shorter, so it's fairly easy to control, but I'm going to uh, use some a different modifier for this hair. So first off, I don't want to have constant for this. I want to just sample in the picker depth once. That way it's going to snap to the mesh initially, but from then on it's just going to be uh, going in screen space. So I'll draw that out and it's not snapping to the mesh. As you can see, uh, I'll pull it out a little bit so it straightens. And then I'm actually going to remove the curve by just clicking on the mesh. I'm going to keep it still masked, so I'm only using this area here. Um, 
and I'm going to click on my move gizmo and go to the customize uh, gear icon and I want to select the bend curve. This is going to allow me to uh, use these orange dots to manipulate and bend the uh, hair planes as much as I want to. Uh, first off though, there's only two right now. I prefer having at least three as a basic uh, amount. So I'm going to grab the orange curve and you can notice that the resolution it's going to tell you what those different cones do. So we'll click once on this and that gets me the nice curve that I'm, or another dot. If I needed to change the axis, say like I had it up and down and rather than left and right curve, that would be the axis over here. So I could turn, click on that one, it turns green for Y and blue for Z. See how the, the direction changes. But I like X, so we'll go with this. Then all I have to do is grab those dots and I can move them around. So you can see how this is a lot easier to, to manipulate for those longer hair curves that can happen. Um, additionally, once I click on one of these points, there are other like uh, modifiers. So let's say I want to make this a, a curlier uh, hair. If I hover over it, this is the twist. So I can twist this some more. I can click on this one and also twist this one, maybe doing it the opposite direction, maybe just a little bit. It depends what I want. Um, we'll twist this one that direction and maybe move it up. Change my views. We'll move this one forward and this one back. And maybe I want it to be a thicker on this end, like it's too thin, or maybe here needs to be um, scaled up scale down. You can even do a squeeze. So if you have something like a square, uh, you can change the uh, amount, as you can see. Pretty easy. So very handy. Um, sometimes this is an easier way than doing the curves, but it depends on what you're working with, really. So I just wanted to show you multiple ways. If I need more curves, points to add, I can simply go over to Curve Resolution and click a little bit more to add more to this piece, and then I can even twist farther because I have more points to manipulate. When I'm happy with this curve, I'll go back up to my gear icon and I need to accept those changes. Otherwise, uh, it's like a transform. It's kind of a preview until you've accepted it. From here, if I wanted to kind of speed up the workflow a little bit, um, as long as you don't have subdivisions on this, which in this case I drew out a curve, so you can't have subdivisions when you're using curves. So that's not really going to be a problem. I'm going to hold down control and grab one of my gizmo arrows and drag, and that's going to duplicate that mesh. So then I can move this into place and just manipulate it a little bit with my move tool, get a bit of variety, and have a little bit faster workflow than individually curving every single one. Last tip is sometimes you want to curve or twist this end piece. Um, and I, there's a brush that I particularly like for doing this sort of thing. Sometimes it's just a bit annoying to be able to, let's say I want this point to curl upwards and it's, I would have to mask off and move to actually get the twist that I want. Otherwise, I'm just kind of getting a bend in this. So I'll undo a couple times and go to my brush palette. And this brush is called Spiral. Here it is. So if I click on that, and I'll isolate so you can see just this piece. This is going to twist or spiral the piece as you can see. Now it is pretty strong um, and it is based on your view so if I go this direction I can curve it this way. I'll maybe make it a little bit bigger and just twist that a little bit. If I go the other direction then it's going to twist the other way. So it's based on screen space um, in the direction that you're facing. So if you want to have a different direction just change how you're looking at the mesh. Say I want this to curl this uh, to the left, so 
twist that a little bit. Just a couple taps on it is usually enough. And we'll curl it a little bit this way as well. And then go back to my move tool, move it up and I'll unhide. And that gets a lot easier. This is really useful as well for twisting the base of the hairs because sometimes that can be hard to get it to look like it's curling in from the scalp. So this direction, not the way direction I want it to go. So I'll, I'll rotate around my view and we'll isolate this by, uh, well, they're the same poly group, so I can't isolate right now, but if I hit control W, then I can isolate and twist that so it looks like it's coming up and out of the scalp instead of replacing it that I had before. All right, so with that, I will go into the next part of the video. Okay, so I have a base base of hair. I did do a quick dynamesh on this as well. Now going to my Mac on hair, and I'll start with the wide cover. These ones obviously add a lot of width and quickly add the depth that I'm looking for. I'm going to go to my end stroke and add a little bit more height to that end. If you want to adjust how wide this is, just move your cursor off of the curve. Once it's red and you can change the draw scale, click on it again, and that's gonna actually modify the curve um, width. While if it's blue and you change the cursor, that's just modifying the curve um, modifying brush. That's just how wide of a brush are you going to be using to modify this curve? Well, this red one is the actual size. Once I've laid down one stroke, I want, and I'm happy with this stroke, I can click on the mesh itself and not the curve, and that's going to delete the curve so I can start a new one. And I'll speed up the video once more for this part.
All right, I have a lot of the base shapes here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, isolate that base mesh that I used initially. I don't really need this. It was just to build out all the shapes and to kind of give me a guide. So I'm going to go to my split and split hidden. So now I have all of the hair pieces as well as that base mesh. And if I look at my wireframe, each one of those hairs is its own individual piece. So I can go through and tweak each individual one using the move brush and making sure that my mask by poly group is set to 100. At that point, I can move individual pieces by first initially clicking on that one that I want to move and then it just will auto mask so that I'm only moving that one piece. So we'll tweak a couple of these pieces and move them around a little bit. Kind of get a the center of this piece a little bit modified, so it just that it looks nice. Knowing where your hair part is is the most important. We'll give me all these shapes. Now checking silhouette. So it's very easy to do this part. It's just hitting V on your keyboard and it will change your color to black um, and you can see just the outline of it. And I already knew that up here at the top it's a little bit too high in one section and I don't quite like that. So I'm going to hit V again. Um, and in this case I want to change multiple hairs at the same time. So I'm going to turn off my auto masking value to zero. We'll move that a bit down, pull this part out, hit V, alright, move this a little bit, hit V again, I'll go back to my poly mask and add 100 to that so I can move individual pieces. Unless there's a couple of pieces I'd like to manipulate individually. As well as because I had that hair plane initially. Um, there's a little bit of a, more than a gap than I'd like between the skull and the character. So I'm going to shrink down the overall size. My gizmo is not in the right place though, so I'm going to unlock it first. Then center to the unmasked area and also center the rotation so I don't have to worry about that. So now it's in the center. Um, yeah, that looks good. Lock it again and now when I transform this, it's going to manipulate and move the whole head, the whole hair mesh. So I just have, uh, have some pieces to fill in, move things around some more. I have a big old gap right here in the back of the head. Mostly I focused on the top area. So I'm going to fill in these couple of different areas. I'll speed up the video once more for this part.
So I have all the base hair pieces um, using the Macon hair curves. I'm going to switch over to the DE, which has the multiple thick um, elements. And this will allow me to create even more variety from, from this and just kind of clean up a couple little areas. Like there's kind of a blank spot over here. Um, I could hide some of this stuff intersecting here. Um, a little bit more variety in the back, but mostly around the ears, I think. It's where it needs the most. Um, so currently I have the dynamic subdivisions on. I'm gonna turn that off for a little bit here on both my under hair and the top hair. And I'll create multi-thick V first. Starting, ah. So automatically I can see that this is going the wrong direction for the stroke. So I need to go back to my stroke menu, curve modifiers and flip horizontally. Make that a little bit different stroke. And I think I want this depth to be a little bit higher, go 10. So it kind of sticks out a bit more. And then just stretch that out so it's not quite so thin. Increase my draw size. Hmm. I think the tip of it could be a bit thinner in this case, unlike the other one. Go. Let's get nicer. Pull it up. So I've isolated all of these. Now I'm going to uh, kind of break them off into their own piece. Holding down Control and Shift and clicking all these multi clearance strands. And each one of these does have a, end, a tip, a beginning and end. So I need to make sure to get those. I'll just grab the middle section as much as I can. Yeah, that looks like the most of, oh, there's two. There's one. So I have all those. I'll hold down Control and Shift and drag to invert my selection. And there's a couple of ones I meant, like, kind of grabbed that I didn't need to. They're not the, the DE kinds. So we'll just hide those. All right, that looks pretty good. Now I don't have the beginning and end of a lot of these. So what I'm gonna do is go to my visibility and grow all. So anything that's connected that has like partially hidden pieces is going to become visible again. So just using this grow all because I have the middle section it's going to grab the rest of those strands. Now I'm going to break this off into its own subtool going to split hidden. We'll call this DE hair. And then going to my polygroups, I'm going to hit auto group. And this is going to isolate each one of these pieces that are their own section or manifold geometry into their own. So now all I have to do is bring back, just to hide that, yeah. So currently I'm moving to my move brush 
and I have poly groups off. So I'm moving everything initially just to kind of tuck some of these hairs in. And then I'll go switching to my move by poly groups and move them all at once. If I want to switch to the other poly uh, mesh, just holding down alt and clicking on it. And I want to move this hair higher. Click back to the other groups, turn that off. Now you can see how much I am going back to that auto mask piece. So typically on my custom UIs, I'll just have that slider be able to pop it up at any place that I am. Uh, so that makes it much faster in the workflow just by uh, putting into a menu and assigning that menu to a hotkey. So I suggest having something along those lines to make things go a little bit faster because otherwise hair does take just plain long time to do. So anything you can do to speed that up helps. I think I got them tucked away for the most part. Now I'll just separate out these pieces. Uh, and before I do that, I'll just go to my other two top and bottom hairs and hit D to activate the dynamic subdivisions. You can see what that looks like, kind of the end state. All right, let's go to my brush, mask by polygroup. And we'll move some of these hairs around. And again, I'm going to speed up the video because this is uh, pretty just using the same thing. So I'm, I have my move brush. I've activated the move by poly group auto masking. I'm just going to grab a poly group one at a time and move them so they kind of have some, some other pieces. So this end of the hair isn't quite as tapered as I'd like it to be, so I'm just grabbing a pinch brush and I'll move that brush along uh, the curve. And going back to my move brush. So I'll speed up the video here.
I've completed the hair. I've got all the little tiny DA, DE hair flyaways. And I'm pretty happy with the end result here. Um, I have three layers now. I have the tiny flyaways that I use the DE one for. I have the top layer and then the under hair uh, underneath all the other pieces. So this is kind of my process for creating stylized hair. Uh, I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you again in the next video.